Richie Dolan here for The Sport of Rich, and we're going to get started today. We're talking about all things about money, wealth, and worth. And as anyone would know that all these calls, these weekly calls that happen 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, uh, I mean, for all of you, it's always a pleasure to be here and working with you guys because my stand this year as I continue to work with great legends, icons, leaders, and gods of getting stuff right one of the things I had to do was step outside the shadows of others so that I can have you all brightly shine in your own world, your own space, your own way. And so this conversation about the sport of rich, if you're making down notes, if you're writing down notes, if you're taking any notes, and I, by the way, remember, if this is your first time here, your second time here, or your 50th time here, you've got to write notes because when you write notes, you hardwire what you learn. You got it, Eduardo. I see a Jerry. I mean, rumor has it, you don't know how to spell, but you sure know how to write deals. So you get down there to those notes taken now, shall you? I miss you, man. So the reason why you want to write notes is because that's just the way that you hardwire the things in which you learn, the things in which you recall, and it trains the brain to store it on the left side rather than the right side. So when you write things down, you recall it. And if you can recall it, you can use it. If you can use it, you can cash in on it. Who's in here to cash in on time that you spend on a phone call? Okay, great. So for me, the sport of rich is always about getting your relationship right with money, wealth, and worth. And why that's important for you all to know is because that is the source of success. I'm so happy that I'll be launching a manifesto very soon, a white paper series called the Rich Unrich series. And the first one is why, why coaching will fail you inevitably. And, and the reason why one of many, and I'll get into it a little bit more tomorrow with my members on the coaching call for members only on coaching, how to coach. And if you're not a member yet, by all means, let me know. If you are, welcome to the family. You know who you are. Um, but the reality is this. One of the discoveries I've had in working inside this realm for now nearly 30 years is that we don't focus on the right way to win. We don't focus on the right way to win. So today, what I did is I took the liberty of taking one of the pages out of the coaching I'll be leading tomorrow for the coaches who are in development and who are working on themselves and wanting to be out there. And one of the key things you want to know is that you've got to be focused on where you want to shift people's games. Otherwise, what we just simply do is coach. We just simply talk. Now, who here would love to know the origination of the term coach? I would. I mean, that's what I want to do. I mean, when you really think about it, if I'm going to coach people on getting their relationship right with money, wealth, and worth, and I'm going to coach them, I want to ask myself one question. What would successful coaching look like in order to know I'm going to win that game? Make sense? Thumbs up. So in order to get the game right, I got to get the player right. In order to get the game right, I got to get the player right. So, Ohad, you're spot on. The reality is that coach, in fact, originated in a small town spelled K-O-C. Now, I don't want to say it out loud, and I want to say it here, but this is a PG-13 show. And, I mean, it's Hulk. I mean, if you really put the enunciation in there. But that small little town in the 1550s, when it first manufactured Norway, small little town in Norway called Hulk, that K-O-C, and for you English-speaking people, you can have a lot of fun with that. They got into the cooch business. Now, when Germans said cooch, it meant coach in French and coach in English. So when they began to commercialize the coach business, it was to carry people from point A to point B. I would write that down, by the way. It wasn't until the 1800s, 1881 to be exact, that in England at Oxford University, it was used for the first time in education. It wasn't used in athletics. It was act, the term coach was used for the first time in education. And it was simply the means, the instructions to bring a student from point A to point B. It's as simple as that. So why do I say coaching fails people? Because what coaches fail to do is simply determine where people are and where they want to go. And that's the game. That's the game. That's all there is. But I want to talk about my life and I need to tell you about my story. And I didn't, I don't think I helped you understand the reason why the weather was, it's irrelevant. All of that is story. It's animation. It's fluff. It doesn't help. What it does do though, is it actually intensifies and extends. It intensifies and extends 
the relationship you would have with someone. And the more you turn up the volume, the more distorted reality becomes. The higher the volume, the richer the distortion. So the coaching industry, a multi-billion dollar industry has thrived on that noise, on turning the knob up. And where it is far more evidenced is in the world of money. Do you want to know why? Because we forfeit giving ourselves the opportunity of learning what to do with our money, being responsible, getting planning, learning about real estate, investing in cash flow properties, and doing all those wonderful things you could do. And we hand our money over to other people. And if you were to inspect their financial well-being, chances are quite high is that they're no further ahead than you are. They're just sitting in a seat and they've gotten some sort of doctrine, education, or accreditation that qualifies them according to governing bodies to give you advice. But advice doesn't live in the world of money. Do you want to know why? Because advice can only be given and granted by you. So to bring this back into focus, the idea of telling you why understanding the distinctions around what coach means is to really understand that the only person that could be at the source of action is not your coach, but you. So let me share with you my screen because I want to make sure you all see what I'm trying to talk about. And the first thing I want to make sure I put up there is why we're here. But if you're making any notes, if you're taking any pictures, I want you to start taking pictures of this. And what I've come to call this is the hierarchy of impact. And the reason why it's important to share is that this is the journey that if you're in the money game, if you're helping people increase their money, wealth, and worth, or if you're a coach, which is my absolute focus this year, is taking coaches to a six-figure income this year, period, full stop. If I can do seven figures in 2020 during a pandemic, you can do six in a year in which we'll get over this thing. You've got to be focused on the game you got to play. Point A to point B. By the way, what's point B? Who can point at it? Take your finger, point at it. Not that finger, Thomas. Come on now. Take that finger and point at it. I'm just teasing you, buddy. I missed you. The dollar sign. It's all about money. I mean, fulfilling your purpose and, and, and living according to your calling and fulfilling your quest and making sure it's noble and putting food. All those things are wonderful, poetic, and magic. But come on, guys. If we ain't moving the needle on money, then what are we doing? Y'all get what I'm saying? Just thumbs up. I mean, as, as soon as I got a real great net worth, I'll start giving some life worth. I'll donate. I'll be philanthropic. I'll give a helping hand. But no one broke can help build others. I'm just saying that now quite boldly. So where does coaching start from? Well, it has to start from here. You've got to always know and aim for pleasing the client. If, if you don't come from the commitment of pleasing the client, then you're not playing the sport of rich. Because if you're not pleasing the client, then I mean, gosh, you're just going to be someone that people will roll over. But if you were to transcend pleasing the client and do something more, what would it be? You've got to produce a result. You've got to produce a result. Just show someone you can produce a result for them and they'll come back. Why? Because if they were to, this is where it gets exciting. Is beyond producing results, transformation is what you really want to get in on. This is where I think the self-help leadership development business has really been born from. It happened around the 60s when people were looking for themselves, searching for a higher meaning, putting a context on this thing called life. And transformation was this thing to pursue. Why? Because people wanted a higher order, a different way of doing it, right, Mike? A different way of getting it done, right, Martin? So to make history. And if you're able to make history, what does that do? I want everyone to write this down because this is the basis of being a coach. It creates enrollment. Now in business, like your business, Thomas, in business, like your business, Mike, in your business, Yusuf, all the way out in Stuttgart, uh, Germany, is if you're able to have customers that make history saying, when I first met this guy, when I first started working with Daniela or Victoria or Catherine, when I first started working with them, my life was like this. I was confronted by that, but then I transformed something. A whole new order took shape and I've made history. The way I was is no longer. The way it once was is far behind me. And so you've made history. Y'all get that? So if that's the game, What's your position? Well, when you're pleasing the client, this is where learning happens. You got to be teaching your client what to do. I have a problem. Click here. I want to solve this area of upset. 
download this video. I really want to shift my business in this particular way. No problem. Learn this. Take that. Learning should all happen digitally. Write that down. If you find yourself in the position of teaching anybody anything, you're wasting your time. Because you'll teach at a pace in which others won't be able to learn from. That's why I like videos. That's why I like, well, things like Cardone You, things like online learning, even YouTube videos, instructional videos, and the like. When you start to graduate from there as a position, what you need to know in the sport of rich is that when you want to make money as a coach, as a mentor, as a trainer, as a leader, you then have to notice the difference between learning and developing. Because developing means taking what you've learned and putting it in the field of play. It means watching their actions, making adjustments. It's like going for a golf lesson. I may have read a book, watched the video, but until I go on the actual grass, whether it's uh, terracotta or in fact fake stuff, I won't know what I've learned until I've what? Struck a ball. And until I keep striking the ball, I won't know what I got to work on. That's where development lives. Learning, then developing. But as you continue to understand, and I need you to write this down, is you need to know that mentors largely cause transformation. Mentors. And the reason why a mentor causes transformation more than anybody else is because mentors stand for the greater version of you. I've been a mentor for a lot of you. Who here by show of hands can actually admit that? Let me take a look. You got it. You definitely got to put your hand there, Martin right? Because I hear where you're coming from. I know where you want to go. And I got you, Jasmine. But at the same time, I'm mentoring you because I'm standing for an outcome. I'm standing for your result. I'm standing over there. I'm not interested in training you. And I'm not even interested in developing you. You've already done that hard work, heavy lifting. What mentors do is they listen for and only stand to achieve for you that transformation. Transformation by definition is the departure of a former self. I would write that down. Transformation is the departure of a former self. But here's the trick. Transformation is not sustainable. It's always generative. Like you got to wake up every morning and generate that transformation. Who here can appreciate that when you first lost weight? I mean, it didn't, it didn't just stay off. You got to stay at it. Stay on top of your diet. Stay on top of your sleeping, stay on top of your working out, your training, the people you surround yourself with, et cetera. I mean, transfer, just because you lost five pounds doesn't mean it stays off. Don't believe me? I'll stand up and show you. I was out five pounds last week and I don't know where it came back from. <laughs> Maybe leftover fruitcake from the Christmas holidays. But all kidding aside, that's what transformation is. But what I believe the sport of rich is really about is achieving a higher order. And that only is achievable in the next two tiers is that when someone elects to be a coach, they're looking to institutionalize a higher order, a different way of doing things, a different way of organizing yourself, a different way of calendarizing the activities that you've got to take on. And here it comes, write this down, a different way to hold people to account. Structure, accountability, measurement, metrics. That's what a coach should do. And mentors don't do that. And that's why we've had mentors come and go, but coaches seem to stick around. And when they start losing, they get fired. Don't believe me? Research the NBA, the NFL, in any other realm where a coach exists. When teams start losing, coaches get firing. But in the realm of making history, this is where mastery lives. And mastery is the demonstration, I want you to write it down, of both you and your pupils. Mastery is a demonstration of you and your pupils being a living example of the work you stand for. So for example, let me just come out of the share for a second before I get deeper in here. Who's here? Let me see if I, any of my master coaches in the house. Good to see you there, Jesmond. Who here's my master coach? I see Louie in the house. What's up, man? I see Noam in the house. Let me see who else is in here. Hey, what's up, Nate? Katie Shea, what's up, darling? Hey, Naran, what's going on? Hey, Naran, let me unmute you for a second. You're a good example. Let me start with you for a moment. Naran, I've known you for a good number of years. 
Uh, we've got lots of friends here from around the world. I mean, we got uh, Anna Cortez, one of our other master coaches down south. We've got uh, Marlene. What's up, darling? All the way out in California. What's up, Tasso? Good to see you, brother. I always love you, man. Um, but Naren, for the time we've spent and for works that we've done, let me ask you something. Do you notice the difference from having learned stuff, developed yourself, having been mentored, and then entering through coach and now mastery? Do you notice the difference? Do you notice that transcendence? Oh, totally. I notice the trend, the, the difference. And I can look back and see my former self, right? I can see where I was. I can see what I had to struggle through, what I had to overcome, how you and coaching helped me. And I can see the steps. And it's almost like where you have to work at something and then you reach the new plateau. And what one of the things that I found that you do is you raise a client up to be able to see the new uh, person that they can be and then you drop them back down and make them do the work to climb the hill again so it becomes theirs mm. well and I, I mean that's 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 amazing because i want you all to write this down is 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 mastery really is the expression of the best version of yourself that's where mastery lives what's up andy where, where mastery lives is inside being able to say, this is the version of who I want to be and here's who I want to have in the world and this is what makes sense for me. So when you think about that, that's where you've got to go. So this the sport of, of rich isn't about wealth. It's, it's about the acronym, realizing I create happiness. For you, growing richer in the things that matter to you. So whatever that game might be, some people want time, some people want freedom, some people want just some sleep. But whatever it is, you are able to be that go-to person to get what people need to get done. And so what coaches have got to always be is there's someone who always speaks, always listens, and always instigates. You're poking the bear. You're poking the bear. And the only way you'll poke a bear is when you're comfortable poking yourself. And that's why I've been saying now for the past couple of weeks is that if you want a committed life of full action and full self-expression, you can only be in one of two commitments, being coached or becoming a coach. And I promise you that the only access you have to a really incredible life is being a coach, learning what you've got to learn and applying it yourself, developing what you've got to develop and develop yourself, becoming that mentor for someone else and teaching it yourself, and then becoming a coach and becoming a mastery and repeating that for both yourself and others. That's what you always have to strive for. Everyone, Sophie, Sarah, Nima, Paulo, when he's still, Cindy, Suzanne, all of you have what it takes to be a coach, to be a living demonstration of living the life you want. All of you. It's not out there somewhere. Write that down. It's not out there somewhere. You already have it. There's just things between you and actually experiencing it. Anna, that's big for us in Latin America. There is so much stuff between what people have got and what they're experiencing. There's stuff in the way. So all we have to do is move it out of the way and coaches do that best. That's why I believe that this era 2021 is the rise of the coach. The rebirth of mastery. It is the rise of the coach, the rebirth of mastery. And the only place you're able to speak about mastery is if you're on the playing field, fumbling the ball, looking ridiculous, scrambling for it, not knowing how it's going to turn out, but playing full out. Rise of the coach, rebirth of mastery. And why? Because everyone wants to do three things. They want to reclaim the life they lost this year. They want to restore their performance that was hindered this year. And they want to refire who they are because we've been in a slumber this past year. Restore, reclaim, refire. Restore, reclaim, refire. Nate, you wanted to say something, brother, because you're one of the best dressed here. Or was that just my imagination? What's up, big fella? Okay, he's good. He gave me the sort of the, he gave me the, I'm okay. All right, so let me get back to sharing my screen. So when you look at that stuff and when you realize what's going on, you have to realize that mastery, which is right there, which is right there, 
what you're doing is that your journey is to arrive at coach so that mastery is experienced by you and by others. Remember, a coach is someone who actually is going to speak, listen, and instigate, poke the bear. And mastery is proven when you're at the source of your results and you're able to place your clients at the source of results. I do this all the time to my number one client, my son. 14 years of age, and I'm always relocating him at the source of results. I'm always relocating him at the source of results. You are the cause. You are the author. Where did you go wrong? Rewind the tape. Replay the mission. Replay the move. So with that being said, how do you do it? Who here would love to know how you do it? You all want to know? Let me give you the formula. Because the reality is, and by the way, let me see who else is here. Noam, you've been you've been a coach for a long time. Is this making sense to you, buddy? I just unmuted you if you had to say something because I felt I felt the vibe. Actually, it's great because it takes everything into order. Mm. I love the rights of the coach, actually, but the restore, acclaim, refire. I, I'm, I think that the order would be different for each person. I mean, some of the people will start with the refire because. They want to feel alive again. Some of them will want to reclaim what they had. Some of them will want to restore what they've achieved. So those three, it's like a triangle. For mm. example, if you, if, if, if you put them in, 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 a, in a shape. So mm -hmm. the triangle could be like that or like that or different. Anyone who wants, but the three of them goes together. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's true for everybody. What's up, Maria? What's up, Lisa? I mean, the, the reality for all of you is, is, is this, is that as much as I agree with Ohad, here's, here's the reality. You as a coach, write this down. You define the order. So if Noam's client's out in Israel, he says, Rich, over here right now, what people are dealing with is A, B, and C. Fantastic. I'm not going to be one to challenge it. I won't mess around with the recipe because I'm only committed to the outcome. But for you, if you're the coach, you dis you define the process. You don't leave it to the client. Catherine, go ahead, darling, how are you? I've just unmuted you, there you go, darling. Um, I'm listening, going back to your picture. With other Catherine, I don't know if it's me or if it's you, but there's something about your voice. Is that just me, guys? Katie, do you agree? Yeah, we can't hear you, Catherine. That's okay. Look at your hair, Katie. Goodness. What's up, Dimitri? Sarai, Montel. My friends, my family from Hawaii in the house. Glenn and Key, I see you. What's up, Lauren? Man with the world biggest headphones. You fix it, Catherine? All right, I'm tap. This is called tap dancing. For those who didn't know, this is a bonus lesson. It's like fill in the air. <laughs> I see you, Roberto. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip you, Catherine. I'll come on back. Okay, so I'm gonna get over to uh, Martin, and then I'll get to Roberto. Go ahead, Martin. What's up, man? Hey, Martin. By the way, as you're unmuting yourself, driven by me unmuting you. So there you go. I did my work. You yeah. do your. Um, you got. I got to get you to talk to Ken because I, I extended a scholarship to you as well as you, Yusuf, from all the work we've done over the past year and a half. So uh, be sure to follow with Ken. Ken okay. at prepareyourlegacy.com. Ken at prepareyourlegacy.com. Um, we want to make sure that we set you up. Okay, buddy? Because I promised. All right. Thank you, Richard. Um, I want to mention a very important thing here. Um, and I think that, um, and it's related to, to the latest uh, thing that you did, Richard, when you started uh, the, the coaching uh, officially. And I think that we need to um, really be more conscious and get everybody uh, in this group to do what you did so that we can have our own um, groups where we actually um, have a monthly membership for people and kind of to get that done as quickly as possible. Um, so I'd like to hear your thoughts on that and um, how we can get to that point as well. So are you talking about my membership? Um, I'm talking about really getting uh, more people um, ourselves into uh, uh, like building out our coaching group, like duplicating what you did, right? So I think that it's important that all of us um, on, on these coaching calls and e even everybody that we coach, that um, we provide a good example and that they can duplicate us and that we make it easy for them to duplicate us as well and kind of 
um, make sure that they get results as quickly as possible. So um, I need to get really much better at duplicating um, what you have been doing um, and applying that to what I do. Um, so um, kind of building out, like getting some uh, solid tips on how we can actually build out our own um, mm. coaching groups where we can for it? We have people on Zoom calls and we coach them through there. Uh, through whatever they are struggling with mm. and taking them from A to B, as you said, um, and kind of just really uh, exploding that and getting that to a higher scale so that we can uh, continue like your legacy and doing what you do and kind of getting that duplication going. Mm. Uh, so, so Martin, exploding, I mean, look, whatever you do in your spare time is your business. That's, that's private, that's personal, leave that to you, okay? So exploding, you keep it over there. Now, if you want to blow it up and show it up, here we go. You guys want to, you want the formula? I mean, you... I don't know how you figured out what I was going to talk about next, because that's the second thing I was going to cover on the second half of this call. But but I've got a plan, and I want you all to be a part of it. You all ready for it? You know, I'll get over that, but I don't want to skip uh, Roberto. So Roberto, make sure you put your hand up so I don't miss it, because the gallery is big. This is big, and I'm, I'm doing this with, with, with my fellow family members. I don't care who's on this call or what they're thinking. I call them family and you'll have to come with an army to rip them out of my hands. And I'm talking about Ohad and Eduardo and Jan and Timo and Katie and Dimitri Montel. I mean, if you're on this call, you my family, you'll get what I'm saying. And I'm here to really do this. Number one, I'm going to create a thousand millionaires in five years, 1000. I've sold three, three companies at a billion dollars each. I won not two championship rings this year. Now I just heard I got a third one coming. I am going to blow it up. And that's the reason why I needed to step outside of a shadow that was casting too much of a chill on my family. It's time to take each of you, each of you and become a millionaire. That's number one. Number two is I got to give you everything you need so that you're focused, you're clear, you're committed, and you remain courageous. Moving the things in the way between you and the actions you got to take. Number three, and here's the secret weapon, the secret weapon, I'm going to say this slow because it's big, is that if you, Martin, let's just talk about you because you asked the question. Martin, if you went out and you shook hands, kissed babies, and knocked on doors, and you had a couple of friends, let's just say a couple of friends, can you convince a couple of friends to say, hey, I've got a coach. I've got a coach who made seven figures in coaching in 2020. He ended up winning a championship ring and coached the former world heavyweight champion back into the ring after 20 years on a hiatus named Mike Tyson. That's my guy. His name is Richie Dolan. Okay. If I was able to put you on a call with him, would you come? If I paid your ticket, if I got you a seat, if I got you a pass, would you do that for me? Because you matter to me. Can you do that, Martin? Can you call a friend or two? So far, so good, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. When that happens, as you guys all know my style, and a lot of you've known me for a long time, I don't sell stuff on here, right? I might self-promote a little bit more right now because I'm untethered, <laughs> a little untethered, but I won't promote. That's just not my style. Probably because I'm Canadian or likely because I'm in service to you. I'm in service to you. So they all come on the call and we're gonna have a conversation called the Sport of Rich. And every week, this call, 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have a courageous conversation about what it's going to take for people to locate themselves at the source of producing results. Now, your three, four, five friends are on this call. I ain't doing anything to promote to them. In fact, a lot of you on this call know for a fact that you've never had any of my team members ever hit you personally and privately saying, check me out, follow me here, buy this right now. Y'all get me, just give me an okay. That's because we honor your presence and we respect the trust. That's just so you know. Now, your friends come and say, that dude was slick. He was cool. He was sexy. Things, I'm sh things I've heard. I, I'm not, those are my expressions. This is, I'm just reading testimonials. I get them from people in Calgary, especially uh, in, in, in Chicago and Boston. Right, Katie? But Martin, what ends up happening is I'll set you up. Because here it comes, and I want you all to pay attention to this. Inspiration and engagement isn't enough to sustain transformation. I can light the fuse but someone's got to fan the flame. I can light it up, but someone's got to fan it long. That's where you come in, Martin. So the minute you're able to find out where someone is and where they want to go, and you're able to insert them in our world, and I'm just talking about the free call. This call is free. This call alone will be enough where every single week, if you've got friends, family, clients 
that you really want to just activate them to really be inspired to be coached by you, bring them here. This is a safe place. I promise you. I promise you, I give you my word that I will not promote to them. I will not try to close them. I will not market to them. I will support you so that you can represent yourself to say, that's the guy that's coaching me. Now, let me ask you something. How do I start to coach you, Martin? That is really powerful, actually, because that's that's something I felt that I've been missing. Because the thing is, I can see so many things that I can improve for every business around uh, where I live. Because none of them, like, like there's just so many things that I can coach them on and how, how they can follow up with their customers better, how they can track their ads better, how they can, um, how they can even do the ads because they're not even doing the ads. Like mm. they're not even marketing uh, on Facebook. They're just, uh, they just pay a little bit for like AdWords and that's it. And they don't even track it. Uh, like I can do so much to, to really like just supercharge what they're doing. I just need to get in the right mindset on how to do that. And that's I that's need that's to that's have that's somebody that's who can, who I can, I can take them to a call and somebody can just sell it to them. And then I can just have them on my coaching uh, for monthly. That's, I, that's it. Like you, you really revealed the, the secret there, I think. First of all, I, I love it when you get excited, buddy, because that's just so damn just priceless. That's his number one. Give him a little bit of a round of applause, guys. Just click on down to your reactions. Give him a round of applause. Come on. I mean, I've never seen Martin, an engineer, this excited about anything for a long time. For those who are just new, it's Richie Dolan here. This is the sport of rich. We do this every week. This is a free call to our global family members who are playing the game of getting rich in the things that matter most to you. Now, I see you, Montel. I see you, Lauren. I see you, Jake. Um, so check this out, Martin. I'm, and this is for everyone. As I'm talking to him, I'm talking to you all, okay? The only need you've got is to get focused for yourself on picking one area of your life you want to shift. Just one. That's where the focus is. It's not a thing to do. It's not like a focus like, oh, my God, I got to go and rebuild my website, and I got to come up with my new mission. Hey, folks, I got the mission. Thousand millionaires in five years. The way to doing that is let's get them into the same conversation. Join the new conversation. Nate just reminded me that we've assembled a team around the world of master coaches who are going to emulate what I'm doing because I'm developing, developing them as extensions of me, right? And they know who they are. And for you, Martin, that's where you get to go from. So let me walk you through the, um, and I want to get off this because it's starting to feel a bit promotional. So I, I, want, to, I want to wrap this up and move on to coach you guys. Um, so they come here, it's free. If they become a member of our, of our community, they get to have access to the live coaching call tomorrow. They get access to the live uh, calls with Courageous Conversation featuring Mike Tyson's coming, Steve Aoki's coming, Wayne Gretzky's coming, um, Tim Tebow's coming. Uh, I just talked today to uh, a number of other really amazing. I mean, Courageous Conversation is coming back bigger than ever before. So they get to be a part of all that for just $99. And they have access to 150 hours of coaching that's in our vault all for free. That's all theirs. And so they get access to all the stuff. But again, as I showed you the hierarchy, just because you have access to things that you can learn and just because you have the chance to develop doesn't mean it'll go into the, on, on the playing field. You need a coach. That's you, Martin. So what, what, what I get to do is I get to tease it out of people that they get to see that there is something for them to work on. And you basically provide them the structure and the support, write that down, the structure and support, the structure and the support to realize one result at a time. One result at a time. I got you, Paulo. One result at a time. So what ends up happening is let's say next Wednesday, Martin, you invite five people. You invite them, you call them, you confirm them, they show up, they're here. We talk about something that gets them excited. And what we leave them with is you got to pick one area of your life for the next week that you want to shift, transform, and or outright change. All of you should be writing this down, by the way. Every week I do this. I pick one thing. I just clean a closet I didn't even know I had full of stuff that I don't, I, I don't even need. But because I just needed to create something that has me in action of shifting something so that it's unrecognizable the following week. You get what I'm saying, Patrick? You get what I'm saying, Carlos? Just picking something. Some, there's a drawer you haven't torn through. There's a closet full of clothes you don't wear. There's, there's, there's Speedos you got to get rid of, especially if you're Jerry Rakowski. I mean, there's, there's things you can always do, but you always want to be recognizing that you're in action moving things. That's it. That's it. And as long as you can prove you can do that, Martin, as long as each and every one of you can prove that, right, Eduardo? 
as long as you can prove you're a person who's always in action, not massive action, that'll come. People will trust you to help them stay in action. Because when people feel the coaches aren't looking, they stop moving. And all of you, who here can do that? Who here can hold other friends and family members, your colleagues or your associates, your clients and customers accountable to being in action? That's coaching. And now you take it to the next level and the next level. Martin, you good? All right, Fab. I'm so happy to see you so excited, buddy, because that's taking about a year to do. So that's good. <laughs> Paulo, go ahead, buddy. Hi, Rich. I just want to say I had to move. The electrician came and I lost power in my room. So I had to go to the basement. I'm so I'm, uh, You're one of the only students my- I know that does handstands while I do my coaching. So it's awesome. And I just want to say that I've invited a lot of people to come to these calls. And I've had a few friends that come. But the problem is they never come back. Even though I keep asking them, why don't you come back? And it was my guy. He's a good guy and everything. And, and they really like the calls, but they never come back. Is there anything I can do to like, yeah. Track people that stick around more. The, the reason why people don't show up is because they've got nothing to show up for. They're coming because you asked them to. And where coaching goes wrong is we don't ask people, what are you committed to? That if you got to be able to develop yourself to be a better person in action, then that would be a real great source for you. I'm willing to bet without even asking you any other questions that those people that didn't come back aren't up to much. Agreed? Agreed. So what, ha- what happens about coaching is coaching has to excite out of someone a possibility. They have to excite out of someone a possibility. Like what if you were able to make more money? What if you were able to pay off your debts? What if you were able to generate cash flow? What if you were able to really win back, restore, get back time, freedom, and choice? What would you do with all of that? People who are just dialing it in are only living enough. So when you invite them to this call and just say, hey, would you come? They'll come. Because you're asking them, but they won't come back because we're talking about staying in action and remaining committed to something. So the number two thing coaches got to do and do well is you've got to find out what people are committed to that they can't seem to get done. Success eludes us. And it's only because we're not going after it. So as a coach, you've got to always be asking yourself, what is it that you're after? What is it that you want that if I were able to be responsible for locating that resource, that bandwidth, that focus, or reclaiming that attention for you, it'd make it easy for you to get that done. Do you know why I'm really successful with a lot of celebrities? Is because I do all the heavy lifting that they don't wanna do. Like pay attention, do research, make it a priority, get it done. That's it, pretty simple. What's the difference between a celebrity and my neighbor? One's well-known and the other isn't. So I hope that helps you there, buddy. Um, Hey, Kyle Guthrow, you want to add something there. Go ahead, big guy. He's one of my master coaches sitting likely in the middle of a lake. Literally, this guy actually does a lot of ice diving and I don't know if it's polar bear skinny dipping or what it is. Hey, Roberto, I got to get back to you too, by the way, because you actually had your hand up and then you disappeared. So I'll get to you right after Kyle, okay? Go ahead, Kyle. Stay with me, Katie. Hold on. Uh, Try it again. No. Okay, that's not on my side. That's on your side, my friend. Roberto, go ahead, buddy. I'm going to unmute you. Oh, all right. Go ahead, Kyle. Yeah, that button just kept saying you can't unmute yourself. So uh, just a couple things I want to add to this. Paulo, uh, you know what? It's like sales. Keep reaching out to more people. And the big thing about that, and I want to share a quick analogy because people love sports analogies and they don't want to get into the Alabama and they've won enough championships, but I'm going to use one person in particular. If I were to say, who's one of the greatest quarterbacks in history, people will say Tom Brady. But if I said, okay, name five of his other players on his team, you might have a tough time unless you were a Patriots fan or a Buccaneers fan. With that being said, sometimes we as coaches, mentors, advisors, we may not have the reach that someone like a Tom Brady does. The big athletes always get the massive endorsements and we kind of forget about who else won them the championship. My example, and I find it very fitting that Richard is sitting perfectly centered in my gallery, is that Richard is our Tom Brady. And what I want to share with the group is that keep promoting Richard. And I'm not saying that because I love him like a brother, but I'm saying that because 
what it will do is that if you keep surrounding yourself with those championship mindsets, people will then start paying attention to you as well. And that is just kind of a very important piece that I'd love to share because Richard's able to elevate your platform as well. So it's a two-way street. We're all winning from this. We all get the championship ring. Yes, Tom Brady got the, the most money and the most accolades, but I'm sure there's a lot of players that he worked with that are like, sweet, I got five rings being in New England. So, Well, and Kyle, let me riff off that for a second. I appreciate the vote of confidence and you're kind of stuck with me because we've been in uh, the same business for a long time. So you've been around me a long time, but I want you all to write down this third point because this is the one that I'm going to bring this home and I'm going to get to Roberto in, in, in the next moment is enrollment. So when, when, when Kyle says you've got to promote rich or bring people here, that's, that's partially true. The other half of what makes who I am more powerful is if you're powerful in your life. So what it means, the act of enrolling people is as follows, is that who you are, what you're up to intrigues others so much that they want that too. So Paulo, what will have your friends come back to these calls is if you're crushing it in your world. If you're a demonstration of living rich in the things that matter and they want that too. So the reason why I may be a bit of a, a heavyweight title winner in this conversation is because I'm always looking for ways to be that demonstration, whether it's in, in, in family, in life, in business, in, in, in all those areas because that's what you do when you're always striving to be masterful at that craft. Y'all get that double okay? So for you, the way you get people to calls like this so that you can now open the conversation for being then the coach for them to holding them accountable to the actionables to follow is that you're a demonstration of doing the same thing for yourself. And so what's enrolling about it is that your life is enviable. Whether it's you're able to balance your checkbook, you got a brand new car, and it's usually the bright, shiny things that catches people's attention. But when you are able to say, look, I can't talk to you about uh, my cars or this. I just got to tell you something. I used to have a relationship like this with my brother. And as a result of doing work on making that a powerful part of my life, my brother and I are doing things I never thought was imagined. We're actually brothers today. And if you asked me five years ago, if this was the relationship I would ever have with him, I'd say it's impossible. It's dead. It would never happen. But today I am. And as a result, I'm teaching my clients how to do that too. In relationships with anything that's important. You all get that thumbs up? So the act of enrollment, and this is a very stingy thing I'm about to say. If you truly are a living demonstration of whatever standard you live for, stand for, living for, you will never have to say a single word to sell yourself. Not one. Who you are, what you're doing, and how that's illustrated, exemplified, and experienced in the world enrolls itself. Do y'all get that? It just does. Because who you are will always speak louder than the words you use, the way you sell, the marketing you've got. There is no power in my brand at all. There's no power in the lime green in my brand at all. If I was just fizzle in a drink, that after a few seconds, I'd just be disappeared. I'd dissipate and forgotten. Do y'all get that? So any of the arrogance or the cockiness and me waving the flag of what I am and what I've done and what I've been up to is only me being able to say, hey, guys, just a reminder, this is me as a daily demonstration, right? I, I mean, I moved X, I did Y, and that's just to show you by way of illustration that I'm doing this and so can you. You want to find out how? Let me show you. And now you go crush your game and I'll tell you how to do it. Kyle, make sense? All right, great. Roberto? Let me try one more time. Where did you go, buddy? I'm here. Oh, fantastic. I'm here. I'm here. Speaking of drinks, we have to have a private conversation about that. You know that. Well, well, well. But for, for everyone that doesn't know me, I am in wine business for a long time. 
Hey, Roberto, do me a favor. Put your put your IG account in there because I've got so many great drinking ideas um, from you because he is a an incredible um, high spirits dealer in the world of uh, fine wines and other type of liqueurs and spirits. I've learned a lot from Roberto. I met Roberto uh, many, many months ago and uh, we became friends. So uh, Roberto, if you don't mind, put it in the chat room. I think people should really follow you. What's up, Ken J in the house? Growth Stack Drive Dude. Good yeah, I will do. Good, Roberto. I will definitely do that in a second from my phone. What I wanted to say on this, and I thank you very much to give me the opportunity to speak for a second. When I, jo when I joined the Grand Cardone family, you know, for various reasons, I was curious and I enjoy every aspect of it, but because of you, now I'm here. Mm. And everything you shared over the course of the time was not just a matter of action and taking the action and work. I grew my business in 2020, 75%. Mm. We lost everything in New York. We gained everything in the other states where we do business with. However, when things shift, and this is might be something that could be helpful also to every one of your audience right now. And I will join this group and I will be part of this family because I do believe in what you offer. And I need to reshift, recalibrate because personal effect over the course of the past few months at a personal level, the loss of my father moving, a, new kid, come, a new kid coming in March. Lots of things have shifted me completely and I lost track. Mm. And what I see in what you have, because you don't offer, you give. And when you give, you also receive back. So I hope that I can go back where I was a few months ago in order to continue, grow, and yes, become a coach too. No, absolutely. Well, first of all, congratulations and uh, equally my condolences. I mean, it's a tough year for a lot of people, um, but it's good to Thank stay you. in touch. And I think that's what everyone needs to write down is that, is that your only access to connection is through conversation. Write that down. That's why I remain committed. My team remains committed. We, we didn't lose a single beat. The moment I knew that my 2021 was going to start different, we just continued as was. And you want to know why? Because when relationships are real, the results will always follow. It says a lot about heart. It says a lot about commitment. And it says a lot about clarity. And it's not just because of me. It's because of the Matts of the world and the Narans of the world and the Katies of the world and the Nates of the world, the Robertos of the world, right? Like my, my, my man, Doug and Jim and Tom and Don and Christian. So, so this is not about me. This is about you. So, so for me, a thousand millionaires in five years, and, and knowing that I'm working with, with this group as my test pilot group to get them there, I want you all to become poster children of that statement, to be the first examples of that mission realized. Do you all get what I'm saying? 100%. I see you, Eduardo. 100%. So for me, number one, you want to always write this down. Whether you're doing this with me or for yourself, number one is you've got to always make sure your community Always make sure that your followers, always make sure that your students, your client, your customers are always in conversation. They must always be in a conversation with you. So you've always got to facilitate that. All of you can count on this conversation happening every single week, and I'll lead this way, and I'll lead for you. I'll champion for you. If, if you come in and you've got, hey, Rich, I've got like 5, 10, 15, 20 people here. Can you really make sure I'm highlighted? No problem. We'll expand the call and make sure we spend some time with you to chat with so that they get to see that this group is all because of you and all because of each other. This is the place that will grow rich in the things that matter together. I'm not going to grow rich off you. I'm going to grow rich with you. And I'm going to do that one participant at a time. And I got time. I got time. I don't know if you've noticed. I'm young. I got lots of fuel in my tank. I'm super rich in what matters. And I've got great people here to support me and help me because this ain't about me. This ain't about my game. This is about all of your games. Uh, Martin, you're, you're killing me, man. You got lots going on. I'm going to get to you in a second, but I love that you're excited. Sarai, come on, girl. I got to balance this all out. We all know that women rule this world. So I'm going to unmute you. Come on in. Hey. Hey. <laughs> From New York. How are you? What's up, girl? You good? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been crazy, but really good momentum. Um, you kind of answered the question, um, but um, I just want to see if you had a different answer as I ask it. I, two years ago, you know, I had people really approach me with opportunities and I didn't believe in myself, but they saw something in me and, you know, they kind of kept pushing with me to like uh, help me grow into who I am now. And thank God they did. So, 
my question is, how do I, you know, I see potential, potential in so many people, but they don't see it in themselves yet. And how do I help them start to just scratch that surface a little bit and, mm -hmm. and really like small little fire, you know, and it can grow into a big one, you know? Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love that you asked that because I'm going to give you guys a bonus because of Sarai. So give her a little bit of a like a nice little a nice little thing because I'm going to give you something that's real gold. You guys ready for this? Lean in, clear your mind. Something big's coming your way. Here it comes. Everyone here, like everyone else out there, all seven billion people on this planet, everyone has limitless possibilities within them and for them. All of us. All of you. I ain't going to get preachy. I ain't going to get teachy. I'm not going to stand on a soapbox nor stand at an altar. You all get it. If you read enough books, if you get, get, get to enough workshops, and if you hang out with enough people who have got the proximity to performance power, and I'm here to tell you that I've been to a lot of it, and I've seen a lot of it. I've sat down with Tony Robbins for eight years. I've worked with Deepak Chopra for 12. I've toured with Robin Sharma when he was my next door neighbor, and we would have tea together while Shelby and Colby slept next door. I mean, I've seen it all. Everyone within you, you've got the possibilities. Write that down. That's bucket number one. The problem is, and for you, Sarai, people don't see potential in you. You know what people see? Here's the truth. They see the problems before you. Mm. All you've got to do is move the problems out of the way. Because I can look at Paulo and Martin and Kyle and Mike and Vincent and Catherine, who may have a defaulty mic, but I can't wait to hear her voice. Eduardo and Jan, everybody here has got potential. Everyone here has got possibilities. This is a universal law of truth. Did y'all get that? Just give me an okay. Give me an okay with you too, Jake. I know those pipes are pumping, but come on, man. I'm gonna go do some push-ups after seeing you today. So, so knowing you all have it, then how do you get to it? It's to move the problems that are between you and your potential. Write that down. The only thing between you and your possibility, you and your power, you and your purpose is the problems in the way. And the way you move the problems, here's the third and final point, the way to pierce through them and have them be annihilated in their tracks is to shift your perspective. Mm. Because problems don't really go away. I mean, I'm not going to snap a finger and your credit card bills are paid. I'm not going to snap a finger and all of a sudden your alimony is paid up. I'm not going to snap a finger and all of a sudden, you know, the temperature changes, the pandemic is over and, you know, the vaccines work. I mean, it's not going to happen. Let's get real. What ends up having to shift is your perspective. So the view in which you've got, if you were to look straight and see only your problems, but you move enough to see around those problems, your perspective only sees what? Your potential, your possibilities. So here comes the truth. Are you ripping yourself fucking off without living and realizing and honoring the possibilities that you are inherently born with and you were conditioned to have, but somehow you've been told to lose because that's normal? Got to ask yourself. I mean, I'm getting chills just saying that. Yeah. Are you conforming or are you storming? And, and so you ask yourself, if that's the key, if that's what I got to do, I can't fix my problems overnight and I ain't going to make them go away. I'm not going to compartmentalize them and reshape them and reshift them. And no, listen, you will have problems. Problems means you're alive and you're experiencing playing the game. What you've got to do is be bigger than them. And to pay homage to my old friend, Grant Cardone, he did say that if you've got big problems, you've got to make bigger moves. And so really, Sarai, not to downplay nor diminish because you are a beautiful soul. I know you now. I know where you come from. Katie's got a lot of uh, pride and love for you. But, but I mean, you know who you are. So, so when someone says, hey, Sarai, I see so much potential and possibility, what they're really saying, I see all the shit that you've got that you're draping yourself that's preventing you from moving with the velocity that your life deserves. If you just took this out, took that out. And by the way, you know how I know this? I've been told this. Mm. You know that guy, Richie? Man, he's got some potential. If only he would focus. I heard that before. If only he would just pick one thing and crush. If only, if only, if only. And guess what that really is saying to me? There ain't no potential in me that they see. They see only my problems and my disfocus, my misuse of my time. 
the 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 inappropriate and the absent mindedness of where I'm putting my attention and energy. That's what people see. So if I get that all sorted, I'm still with potential. But now I restore and reclaim. I want you to write that down, guys. I restore and reclaim my focus. So as soon as I personally, Sarai, and you know this because you're now part of the family as a member and welcome to it, of course. It was such a pleasure to see you join. Um, for me, I thought, oh my God, if I can make a thousand millionaires happen in five years, how would that transform people's lives, their legacies, and for, for generations to come? When I got really clear, viscerally, diabolically to that possibility, everything changed for me. Everything yeah. changed for me. Because now I realize that's, that's worth giving my life to. Not diminishing or undermining any of the time I've had anywhere else. Not with Grant, not with Tony Robbins, not with President Clinton for the four years we worked together. Not for any of them. Not for Oprah, Ellen, everybody. Am I name dropping? Hell yeah, because I can I worked with them. But until I realized that I'm an instrument of catalyzing wealth for people because I can do it, then that's when I realized that it's time to step up and do just that. Without apology, without compromise, by design, and not by chance. So the real question, if you were to sum summarize everything I said, it comes down to this for this wonderful Wednesday night chat together worldwide. Are you playing the game of getting rich in the things that matter intentionally or unintentionally? Because once you get the game straight, then you can decide what position you want to play. Are you playing just to please somebody? Are you playing just for a result? Or are you playing for transformation? Or are you playing for a new higher order? But my favorite and your favorite too, is you should always be playing to make history. Yes. To break the record, to move the bar, to leave a legacy. You said it, Christian, my brother all the way out in Scotland. So Ryan, does that resonate with you? Yeah, really does. Um, what a beautiful smile. A lot. Um, and it just gives me the tools and the verbiage as well to talk to myself and reflect. And also when I speak to other people as well that don't fully believe in themselves and uh, help them. Well, remember, right? This is my claim and you guys can have it too. I mean, just because I'm saying these words doesn't mean I own them, right? I'm not Oxford, Merriam Webster or, 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 you know, the dictionary. I mean, what I'm committed to doing is always making sure and a coach should always making sure you're clear, right? Nate, thanks for prompting me on that. Always making sure you're clear. Because once you're clear, you can be committed. Once you're clear, you can be committed. But once you're committed, you should always be in a committal, actionable course of direction with courage. That's what it's all about. There's things I do and I can't believe I do them, but I'm courageously doing them because you know what? I'm committed to doing it. There are moments where I'm in the flow of doing something and I have an outer body experience saying, oh my God, I can't believe I'm actually doing this but I'll do it anyways. Cause ain't that living? Hey, Daniela, ain't that living? Like feeling the fear and doing it anyway? All right, you got me Montel. Keith, did you want to say something brother? One of my master coaches all the way out in middle Canada there. Yes, is that is that yes? Or is that like Canadian for, I'm cool. I got Tim's here. Good, but I, I unmuted you my brother. Yeah, I've unmuted you. There you go, buddy. All right. All right. So I just, one of the things I wanted to, to bring up that I think is really important that people don't get caught up in, in this is, is don't try to duplicate someone being someone else or what someone else. Im imitate. Take pieces and parts of things that you see or that you see that work and try them on for yourself to see how they fit. Because you, I can't be Richard Dolan. I can't be Cal Guthrie. I can't be Naran. I am me. And how I, if I try to if I try to speak only like Rich, if I try to speak like Richard Dolan and it doesn't fit, people will see that it doesn't that doesn't fit on me. Keith, I, I can barely talk like Richard Dolan. Let me tell you right. <laughs> now. But that's but so but like 
So, and that's why, like Martin said, you know, to duplicate what you do. Well, you don't try to, because if you'll only find yourself banging against walls, if you try to duplicate what someone else does, because you can't be them. You can only be yourself and you have to fit what works within yourself so that you can have success. Otherwise you will hit walls and you won't have that success because you'll constantly, you constantly be comparing yourself to someone else and mm. you can't compare yourself to someone else. That's what athletes run into all the a lot of the time and all the time, as you know, Richard, but people in business too. No, you got it. That, that's why I've been talking to a lot of my old uh, family members, especially from the Grant Cardone world saying, I want to turn you into the Grant Cardone of your country, your market, your vertical, your space. You know, and there's some people that say, hey, I want to be the Tony Robbins of that space, or I want to be the Oprah of that space. You can be anyone you want, but we're going to have to be you. It'll be you doing what they do and playing it your way. But let's emulate it, not imitate it. You're all going to emulate me, but you're not going to imitate me. So listen, I'm going to leave you one more bonus because tomorrow on Coaching the Coaches, uh, for those who are members and are joining us in that call, my Coaching the Coaches session is a lot longer. It's 90 minutes. So prepare yourself where we slow down and we're going to develop the skill set. Now I'm going to tease you guys with just one of the eight lessons I'm going to go through because I want to leave this with you as a really great book stop, a bookend rather, to this conversation. One of the key reasons why, um, and this is good for you, Paulo and Martin and some others who are going to be inviting people next week here, is what we never establish in the world of coaching inside the realm of developing people and getting them in action is we never, here's the first one, is we never establish a sense of urgency. So all of you right now, this is some homework for you as we part ways. You want to ask yourself, one, if there was an area in my life that I would want to kick ass this year with, just pick one. Nikki, you can't pick fitness because you crush it all the time. Pick one. Pick one area of your life that you really want to crush. You've always wanted to. You've always wanted to be a speaker. Like, I mean, a professional speaker. You've always wanted to be a coach or you've always wanted to make, I mean, $100,000 within a quarter, whatever the goal is, what, what is that one thing? But then what you want to do is you want to ask yourself by when do you want to accomplish it? Let's just say by the end of the year. And then what you're going to do, step three, is divide the time in which you want to accomplish it in half. And I want you to really do that exercise so that you can viscerally feel your palms sweat, your armpits get clammy, and you start looking for where to run to and hide out in. And that's being human. And I'm going to be the support for you to develop the skill set and the muscle so that you can be clear, committed, but courageously in action of counteracting that effect, especially you, Tara. Because we will all shrink to the smallest form possible simply to survive. And folks, who here by show of hands would agree, survival is not enough. Success is the only option. Y'all get that? I see you, Jake. All right, so for all of you, for those who aren't here tomorrow, we'll miss you. We'll see you next Wednesday. For those who are here tomorrow, then we're gonna coach you through the eight steps. There are eight steps to producing the new coaching code for this year on how to really find your clients on the playing field and moving them through the actual experience of getting things done so that you're not preaching, you're not teaching, you're leading, you're supporting, you're guiding. For everyone else that's here next Wednesday, 4.30 Eastern Standard Time, we'll be here. If there's friends you want here, if there's other folks you want here, I see you, Catherine. If there's people you want to be here, my commitment, three things. One is I'll never sell them. I'll mention that they can always join our conversation. You can handle that with them, but I can promise you right now it's a safe place. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Number two is if you give me the shout out that they're there, like, hey, Rich, in the private chat, hey, I've got three friends here, five friends here. I'll make sure that this call becomes your call from the perspective that at least I give you some props for being a part of a bigger community. That way you show up bigger. That way you've got your master coach here with you. And we're championing you as much as you're championing me in this movement. Make sense? Third, and most importantly, though, before you invite them, always ask people, if you were to show up and learn something about yourself on how to really be in action, what area of your life is important that you are in greater action with? Set them up to be here for something. Give them something to listen for. When I went to church with my grandmother back when I was a kid, I hated it. It always meant I was going to go hungry for two hours and I had to go for a long walk to and back from the sermon. But my grandmother picked up on like a good old grandmother would. You know what she said to me? She said, Richie, why don't you do this? 
If you are able to keep track that every time the Father says the word Jesus God or Holy Spirit, if you've got the right number of times he mentions it, I'm going to take you to the candy store. And with a pad and with a pen, I would listen intently every time he said Holy Spirit or Jesus. And I would check it off, check it off. Now, every single time, I almost came within two or three points of being bang on. And you want to know why? Not because my grandmother knew the number but because she just wanted to make sure I was engaged. And because I was playing for something, I was all in on something. So you've got to locate for your friends, your family, your clients, your customers, your students, what would you want more of that this call could actually excite, instigate, light up for you? I'm committed to that. Make sense? All right. Catherine, we've come full circle. Your hand is up. I don't want to dishonor you there, darling. So I'm unmuting you on my side. Why don't you go ahead? Okie doke. Can you hear me this time? Absolutely. There we go. The wonders of technology. Um, in the hierarchy of impact, the slide, mm -hmm. um, above mastery was the bullseye. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the bullseye. Well, the bullseye is money. Okay. The bullseye is money. One of the big things that I've always been preaching, especially over the past 18 months, Yvonne, Sophie, Rob, is you've got to make it um, about money. You've always got to make it about money. And you want to know why? Because it's the measurable thing. It's measurable. You all know how much money you made last year. And if I ask you, you probably would be able to find out how much you made the year before. But you won't probably remember how much you weighed two years ago. You probably won't remember how many great dates you were on. You probably remember how many bad dates you were on. <laughs> but on it goes. So the only metric that's really worth playing for is something financial, right? Something money, wealth, and worth. And we talked about this last week, Catherine, right? Money being currency, money on hand, wealth being things, house, car, shiny stuff, watch stuff, things. And then worth being the freedom of choice, freedom to have the power to do and the power of choice. Knowledge is in there too. But that number, that financial figure, Catherine, is what I want to get people to. So I'm going to play the game called a thousand millionaires in five years. Some people might say, hey, I'm not all about the money, to which I say, great, we'll miss you. Because if I make you a million dollars inside the next five years for me, then you can go and do anything you want to do. You can take that million dollars and donate it, build schools, erect hospitals, give back to your own community. You can do whatever you want with it, but it gives you the power to decide. It gives you the power to choose. And here's the best part. And I want you all to write this down, especially you, Catherine. When you're able to produce a financial miracle, you'll get addicted to performing more. That's what I want you all. My claim inside the next five years is that you get grossly addicted to causing miracles for people financially. That's what I want for you. Because if you can create financial success by performing financial alchemy for people in their lives, gosh, that's elongating their lives. Does that make sense, Catherine? All right, cool. Good to hear your voice, Catherine. I'll see you tomorrow in Sarai and the number of others. So um, Rob, is your hand up or are you just pointing at me because you're my biggest fan? Okay, cool. I saw, I saw your pen up. I'm just taking a look to make sure I don't miss anyone. Matt, my brother. Oh, Naran, go ahead, buddy. Oh, and Helen. What I hear from Helen? You want to say hello, Helen, all the way in from Australia? Here, I'm unmuting you, my dear. Hi, Rich. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Good to have, good to see you, darling. Um, um, this call is perfect timing. Uh, so I've been coaching this week, um, a family member actually through a million dollar property purchase. Now I've bought, I've bought properties in the past, but never a million dollar property. And I just dropped the narrative of just because I haven't bought a million dollar property doesn't mean I don't have enough experience to teach him, to guide him and to help him. And that's, it's totally changed my mindset. So it's, it's been awesome. Helen, you know what you just did when, when you stop, when you drop, what you make it mean and you make it about what you stand for, write that down, everybody. When you drop what you make it mean, and you make it about what you stand for, guys, you're unhooked. You become professionally unhinged. And that's not a shot at the president, by the way, but I mean, unhinged as in, you're not attached to how it should look. You're not attached to what they might think. You're not attached to what one would say, because it's irrelevant. 
Yeah. It's irrelevant. And that's what it means. So it's good to have you, darling. I've missed you. Thanks. Me. Oh, I gotcha. Hey, Doug, good to see you, brother. I've missed you too. And Roy Gunderson, where the hell have you been there, cowboy? Good to see you, friend. Um, Naran, let's get back up to you, buddy. And then and it sounds like Martin's going to punch me if he doesn't end up saying something. So I'll, beg you, Becca, I'll get back to you in a second, Martin, because I'm, I'm a little bit over the time limits here. But uh, Naran, go ahead. Thanks, Rich. Uh, I'll keep this really quick. Uh, I, I actually want to take an opportunity to, to not talk to you, Rich, but talk to the group. Mm. Because I've been around you, Rich, for nine years, and I've been part of your team for the last little last few years. But my my concern I have, uh, boys and girls, is that when we show up in Rich's universe, when we show up for these meetings week after week, and it's not costing us a lot other than maybe an hour of our time to sit to sit here, we have this experience of feeling good about it. But my concern is that we won't actually do anything about it. My encouragement to you, my if I could reach through the screen and grab you and shake you, this is what I would say. Rich has helped me make, right now in real estate, I'm controlling about $15 million worth of real estate assets. That is in large part because of Richard's tutelage and me hanging around the guy. Do not waste your pain. Do not waste the opportunity that is presented to you right now do the damn work lean in do the work don't waste the pain even if you're just on the wednesday calls don't waste it make make, maximize it lean in grow up that's all i got buddy thank you rich wow man i appreciate that i mean 50 million bucks that's uh that's that's no that's no uh short task but but you know for naran that's that's it that's what it's about I mean, if we, if we can create mastery in your life, then guess what you want to do? Go create mastery in other people's lives. So it's, it's a real treat. Uh, Matthew, good to see you. Martin, can you keep it short? Because I want to promise people they got to get to their dinners and their breakfasts and, and bed for, for some of our friends on the other side of the planet. So go ahead, my friend. What's up, Samantha? Good to see you, darling. Yeah, so this is a quick one. And uh, this is related to the people that we invite. Um, I think it would be really great uh, to have a Google form where we can... Uh, so we, we find out, we kind of, uh, the, us or anybody who invites somebody to this call finds out what transformation does the person wants to achieve. And then we just uh, post it in your pause, Google pause, form. Pause. Hold on, let's make it simple. Let's, let's make it simple. What, what problem have they got? What challenge are they living through? If you can pick any area in your life, if you can make it just a little bit better, what area would it be? Yeah. Don't ask for transformation. I mean, I still don't even know what I'm having for dinner. So, I mean, for a lot of people, you just might want to say to people, hey, listen, I've got this weekly call. I'm a part of it all the time. I get tons of value out of it because what I've realized about coaching is that only when I'm in conversation, I'm a contribution and get contributed to. So if you want access to being able to get lit up, to shift something in your life so that you can alter the direction of the velocity in your life to get something done, what area of your life would you want to shift? What area of your life would you want to get better? What problem would you want to do away with? Or what area of your life would you want to get just right and crush? And as soon as they say it, then you say, great, listen from that place. Join me on that call. Yeah, Richard, it's actually it's actually an idea to get them stick better. Uh, so, um, And my idea was that we tell you that, and then you are the person who takes that into account and actually gives them those results in advance so that they get something really valuable from the call and then they stick, then they come back. So that the, I was I was thinking that it would be great if you have some, uh, just something automated where you can just go to a page and you send it out like before every session, we just pull it, put it in there. Like this is, yeah. these are the people I'm inviting. This is what they want. And then you just give it to them during the call. So I think that would be great. That's just you, an idea. First of all, I love the engineering you because that's, you're already, you're, I mean, this is a marketing conversation. Now all of a sudden you're just like, how do I populate this show in such a way that we get people here and we create breakthroughs for them? I love it. We're going to do it. Get it a hold of Ken at prepareyourlegacy.com. Ken at prepareyourlegacy.com. He's uh, the COO. He's the guy that makes things happen. So he'll probably be the one who'll help you get that stuff done. Um, and off we go. So listen, folks, I, I mean, you know me, right? I mean, on these calls, I like to try and stay to four. Was this a value today, everybody? Today, we talked about the sport of rich. We talked about the playing field, who you're playing with, and how you are playing the game. We talked about just creating results, moving the needle, transformation, getting higher order, and making history. 
when you are a coach, you move the game differently. When you're being coached, we often remain too small. So this conversation is about developing yourself as a coach so that you can create the standard that you live up to and through. If this was about you being a living demonstration of that, then it starts with you. If you want to be able to sell yourself as a coach going forward, pick one area in your life you can start to shift and move the furniture around so people start to recognize that you're in action and being at the source of your own transformation. Make sense? All right, fabulous. For everyone that's been here, uh, thank you so much for joining me. For those who are already a member of our coaching calls, it's only a membership-based business. It's $99 a month. Cancel anytime. There's no obligation. There's no contract. Uh, if you get value, you pay for value. If you don't get value, stop paying because um, we don't pay if we ain't here to play. Uh, for Sophie, Daniela, Katie, good to have you. Uh, I miss all you guys. Look at Mike's in the house. And, and of course, we're talking soon. Marlene, uh, hey, Roy, we got to talk, man. Um, and guys, listen, this is just the beginning. I'll see all my coaches tomorrow at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time where I coach the coaches. I'll walk through those eight steps. And uh, for those who aren't a part of the family, no problem. We'll see you next week, Wednesday, when we play another game of the sport of Rich. Uh, Alyssa, good to see you. Maria, buenas noches. And uh, all of you, I love you. Be great, be awesome, be you, because anything less, well, is just too ordinary. Thanks, everyone, and have a great night. Be safe. Be awesome. Be you.